In the welterweight division at UFC Vegas 75, you got Nicholas Dalby coming in an impressive 21 and 4, taking on Muslim Salikov, who comes in at 19 and 3. This is the first fight in a big card, but here in the main card, this is the first fight. Now, both guys stand 5'11. Both guys getting a little older. I didn't realize this. Salikov 39, Dalby 38. Dalby's got a 5 inch reach advantage, 75 to 70. Both guys fight right handed. Both guys are similar in significant strikes per minute. 3.7 for Dalby. Salikov, 3.3. Both guys land over a takedown over the course of three rounds. Dalby, 65% takedown defense. Salikov, 77%. And both guys got enough UFC fights where the stats uh, can be used. Right now, Nicholas Dalby. Is four and two in the UFC with the wins over Warley Alves, Claudio Silva, D. Rod, Daniel Rodriguez. That's a big one. And Alex Cowboy Oliver. He lost to Tim Means and Zach Cummins. Now Salikoff is five and one. He lost to Lee Jingliang by second round KO, but beat Andre Fialho by KO. Francisco Trinaldo decision. Uh, Alessio Zaleski dos Santos decision. Loriano Staropoli. And Nordin Taleb, who he KO'd. He also, well, no, he lost to Jing Liang by KO. So, 5-1 and one in the UFC, and really impressive. Tough thing about Dalby is he's got a lot of, U, uh, well, not only a lot of UFC fights, a lot of professional fights. He's got 26 total. This will be his 27th. This will be Salikov's 23rd, so they're both close there. I like Muslim Salikov, right? He's not going to be quite as active as Dalby on the feet, although it'll be close. But he's got an advantage in the takedown game, not because he lands more, but because Dalby has average takedown defense. So I think that opens the door for Salikov to get some control time. They'll split, you know, two rounds in terms of striking. Salikov will land a few takedowns in one of the others and win this fight 29-28 by unanimous decision. Maybe split decision, but Salikov is definitely going to get two judges to give him two rounds. In my opinion, it's real simple. Salikov wins to move to 20-3. and three. Here in the welterweight division at UFC Vegas 75. In the lightweight division at UFC Vegas 75, you got Manuel Torres coming at 13 and 2, taking on Nicholas Mata, comes in at 13 and 4. The Brazilian Mata, 5'9, one inch shorter than Torres. He's 30. Torres is 28 years old. Torres has a three inch reach advantage. Now, they don't have a stance listed for Torres, which is odd, but Nicholas Mata fights right handed. Now, Torres lands. 10.5 significant strikes per minute in two fights in the UFC so far. Both, I believe, first round KO wins. Mata lands about 3.4 significant strikes per minute. So a big difference in terms of activity. Mata may want to consider taking this fight to the ground. Now, Torres has two wins in a row again against uh, Frank the Crank Camacho. First round KO performance of the night. He also beat at the contender series Colton England. By first round KO. So things are looking good for him. Nicholas Mott, on the other hand, 2-1 and one in the UFC. He lost to Jim Miller. You'd expect that. Second round KO. At least he made it that far. He beat Cameron Van Camp by first round KO. And Joe Lowry by decision. And I like the fact that Nicholas Mata went to the second round with Jim Miller. You saw uh, a week prior. Well, really two weeks ago by fight time here. But last week, Jim Miller dominated his opponent in a record like 27 seconds or some, something like that, somewhere under 30 seconds. Nicholas Mata made it to the second round. But Manuel Torres is just too good. I mean, the activity from this guy is not going to continue at 10 and a half significant strikes per minute. That'll come down. But after two UFC fights, he's landed 59 uh, significant strikes in about a round of fighting. So absolutely ridiculous pace. Manuel Torres will continue that here. He'll get the win on activity, maybe a finish in the third round to move to 14-2. and two. In my opinion, lightweight division, UFC Vegas 75. In the featherweight division at UFC Vegas 75, you got Pat Sabatini coming in 17-4, taking on Lucas Almeida, Brazilian. Comes in at a nice 14-1. and one. He's got a 3-inch height advantage at 5'11", both guys 32 years old. Almeida, 1-inch reach advantage, no big deal. Both guys stand right-handed. Here is where the differences are. You got the striker and Almeida, 6.6 significant strikes per minute. So just 1.7 for Sabatini. But that's because Sabatini likes to land takedowns. 3.8 over the course of three rounds. That's well over a takedown 
per round. And the bottom line is uh, Lucas Almeida has a 50% takedown defense. That's going to be a problem. Now, Sabatini's been in the UFC for a while. He's 4-1. and one. Lost his last fight to uh, Damon Jackson by KO, first round. But before that, ran all four in a row against Tristan Connolly, Jamal Evers, Tucker Lutz, and TJ Laramie. Now, Lucas Almeida's just 1-1. One one. Lost at the Contender Series to uh, Daniel Zell Huber by decision. But then got the opportunity in the UFC and KO'd Michael Trezano in the third round. So, you know, he was 13-0 coming in. He's 1-1 one one since. The only loss of his career was at the Contender Series. That was unfortunate, but he rebounded well. The problem here is that Sabatini has multiple UFC fights. Almeida's on his way and very well could pull this thing out. He's an, under, uh, an underdog, but not a huge underdog. But the takedown game and the lack lack of takedown defense by Almeida is going to be a problem unless Almeida can find a way to get his takedown defense up. 50% is not going to cut it. He's got to be 80%, 90% in this fight. Like at the end, you got to have one takedown on 10 attempts by Sabatini. That's the case Almeida wins, but I don't think it will be. I think Pat Sabatini will land takedowns. May or may not get a submission, but will control at least two out of three rounds to get the win here in the featherweight division at UFC Vegas 75. In the middleweight division at UFC Vegas 75, you got our man Petrosian taking on Christian Duncan, who's undefeated at 8 0. Petrosian 8 and 2. And this fight is very close in terms of the odds. Petrosian one inch taller at 6 3, but he's given up 8 inches in reach. That's a significant amount. 79 to 71 in favor of Duncan, who's a switch stand fighter. Petrosian, as you know, fights right handed. Now, Petrosian lands about six significant strikes per minute so far. Duncan, 4.8 per minute. Uh, of course, these guys are early on in their career. No takedowns to speak of, which might be a good thing for the viewers, right? Petrosian, 3-1 uh, and one in the UFC, coming off the win against A.J. Dobson by decision. He lost to uh, Kyle Barajo by decision, but he beat Gregory Robocop Rodriguez by split decision. That's a big win. And in a fight that he doubled him up in significant strikes, 127 to 61. He also beat Kolev in his debut by KO. So again, he's three and one. Now, Christian Duncan just has one win against Dusko Todorovic. That was by first round KO. And that came pretty quick. And that's why he's a slight favor here. And he's undefeated. You know, I want to lean with Armin Petrosian because of the significant strikes per minute. And he's done it over the course of four fights. So he's going to be fighting at a rapid pace, very active. But Christian Duncan's undefeated for a reason. He also came in on the big stage at UFC 286, Edwards versus Usman 3, and got a KO, making a name for himself. So look out for this guy. Petrosian's pretty good, but he's also got two losses for a reason. So I'm leaning with Duncan here to make up for the stats, uh, outpace Petrosian, but more importantly, possibly get the knockout or the KO in the first or second round. Duncan wins, in my opinion, to remain undefeated at 9-0. Middleweight division, UFC Vegas 75. In the lightweight division at UFC Vegas 75, you got Armand Sarukian taking on Yaquim Silva. And you already know the lightweight division, one of the most uh, deepest divisions in the UFC. Now, Sarukian is a huge favorite. He's 19-3. and three. Silva, the Brazilian, 12-4. and four. Now, he's one inch taller than Armand. He's 34. Armand's coming up. He's only 26 years old. Sarukian's got a four-inch reach advantage, 73 to 69 inches. He's right-handed. Silva is a southpaw. Now, Silva can stand and bang. He lands 4.1 significant strikes per minute. Sarukian at about 3.6. That's only going to be a difference of seven or eight over the course of the fight. But what's a big difference is Sarukian lands more than one takedown per round. Silva, hardly any. Now, Sarukian, 75% takedown defense. That makes matters worse for Silva. He's coming off the win over Ismagulov by decision. He lost to Matush Gamrot by decision. In a great fight, but Gamrot had six takedowns. Forget about it. He also beat Joe Alvarez, Christos uh, Diagos, Matt Frivola, Davey Ramos, and Olivier Aubin Mercier. So he's won six of the last seven in the UFC. He also lost to Islam Mahachev. Uh, at the very beginning, in an awkward fight, he just had 14 versus 13 significant strikes. So, very slow-paced fight there. The, most of the fight was spent 
on the ground. Now, Silva, 65% takedown defense. That's average. Not good enough to get the job done here and why he's a big underdog. He's coming off the win over Jesse Ronson by KO, but he lost to Ricky Glenn and Nazrat Hakbaras, both by KO. And again, that's why he's a big underdog. And this one's easy. I mean, you got to go with Armand Sarukian. He's a 10 to 1 favorite for a reason. The ground game is ridiculous. You know, now Silva can compete on the ground as well, but not at the level of Sarukian. So Armand Sarukian's going to win this fight with some ground and pound submission attempts, but mainly uh, on control time. It's going to be an easy win for him. He's going to move to 20 and 3 here in the lightweight division at UFC Vegas 75. In the middleweight division at UFC Vegas 75, you got two top contenders in Marvin Vittori and Jerry Cannonier set the lock horns. Vittori 19 and 6. Cannoneer, 16 and 6. So you can see why this is a good one. Vittori is slight favorite, but it's almost 50 50. Vittori is one inch taller at six feet. Uh, he's considerably younger, 29 versus a 39 year old Cannoneer. I didn't realize Cannoneer was that old. Cannoneer's got a four inch reach advantage, 78 to 74. He's a switch stance fighter. Vittori is a southpaw or left hander. Both guys, at least four significant strikes, so four exactly uh, per minute. For Cannoneer, 4.4 for Vittori, so it's really close there. But Vittori uh, likes to take the fight to the ground if he can. He lands nearly two takedowns over the course of three rounds. Should this go five, he's looking at three or four. Uh, and what that means is the takedown defense for Cannoneer is important. It's 64%, which is right about average. Now, Vittori is a 75% takedown defense, but that shouldn't matter in this fight. And it would be good enough in any fight. Now, Vittori's coming off a big win over Roman Delice, uh, a guy that many people thought would beat him. Before that, he lost to Robert Whitaker by decision uh, in a fight that he got dominated, 74-33 to 33 in significant strikes. He also beat Paulo Costa by decision. This guy is a decision machine, beating the likes of Kevin Holland uh, and Jack Hermanson. His last win uh, was a submission victory over Carl Robertson. Now, Jared Cannonier in a similar boat. He lost Adesanya uh, by decision for the title, but performed well. 116 to 90 in significant strikes, not bad. He beat Sean Strickland by split decision, beat Derek Brunson by KO, beat Kelvin Gasolum by unanimous decision. He also lost to Robert Whitaker, 69 to 53 uh, in significant strikes. So it's going to be a close fight. I'd really like to go with Jared Cannonier, but I just don't think he's going to get the job done. I think the six-foot Vittori has an advantage in height. He's given up some length, but he's going to get into the body, find a way, find ways to get takedowns, limit Cannonier's striking ability. And you should see Vittori with a, about five to seven minutes of control time on three or four takedowns. Uh, Cannonier won't maintain the four significant strikes per minute, which will be about 100 significant strikes in this fight. He'll probably be closer to 60 or 70, but Tori will be a close to 100. So he's going to win in control time. He's going to win round by round. He's going to win in significant strikes. I like Vittori to pull this thing out and move to 20 and 6. I think the guy's ceiling is still higher than what it is now. But he wins here in the middleweight division, your main event at UFC Vegas 75.